just have to show. Do you guys hear anything coming out of yes. the speakers? Okay. Good evening. I'm Amy Steinfeld with the Brownstein Firm. Thank you so much for coming to our third Canna Quarterly. And thank you to our co-sponsors and co-founders. Felipe Infante, where are you? From Delta Leaf Labs. Thank you. And uh, Kristen Walker from SB Verde. Oh, Kristen! Okay. So this event is very important as our community is still experiencing a conservative and aggressive effort to devalue the contribution of this industry. And this group is, uh, this anti, this we're calling them the neo-prohibitionists. They're led by a well-funded and highly organized group. So today our speakers are gonna be providing information about how you can stay involved and informed and support this industry. This event is very timely for me too, as today my firm announced the formation of our industry group, uh, our cannabis and hemp group. I will be co-chairing this group along with my colleague, Melissa Kuypers Blake, out of my Denver office. Congratulations. Our group delivers comprehensive solutions uh, for the full spectrum of clients in the space, from those touching the plant to those affected by it. We possess decades of experience at the front lines of land use, water, and real estate, and we represent agricultural interests throughout um, Southern California, the Central Coast, Colorado, and Nevada. Our government relations team is also at the forefront of cannabis and hemp policy across the country and also at the federal level in DC. We help shape policies and the regulatory framework for both cannabis and hemp. In November, we'll be bringing my co colleague, Melissa Kuypers Blake, to Santa Barbara to talk about her efforts at the federal level. Without further ado, I'm thrilled to be able to introduce three super inspirational women in the cannabis industry. First, we have Autumn Shelton. Autumn is a partner and CFO of Autumn Brands, a 50% women-owned cannabis business in CARP. She's also a leading member of CARP Growers. Autumn has spent almost four years successfully navigating the uncharted waters of California's medical marijuana collective model and the newly legal cannabis industry. As CFO, Autumn is a strategic decision maker for the family farm, which started in Holland over 100 years ago. Along with overseeing the company's financials, she's also in charge of legal compliance, this is a huge job, <laughs> including ordinances, regulations, packaging, permitting, and licensing. Sarah Rotman is CEO and founder at Bluebird 805, and also the strategist and chief uh, creative officer at Nuco Branding. Sarah has over 25 years of, there you are, fashion, beauty, hospitality, and, inter um, and working on brand solutions for clients <laughs> in fashion, beauty, hospitality, and the entertainment industries. She's worked with huge brands, including Tory Burch, Theory, Vera Wang, Michael Kors, Campari, and Bliss Spa. Um, Sarah's also the founder of Bluebird 805, a farm I know well. It's a craft cannabis company that offers organic flour and extracts. Sarah was inspired to start Bluebird 805 with her husband, Nate, following the discovery of a life-threatening illness. Sarah is also co-founder co of the North County Farmers Guild, which we'll be hearing more about. There's actually flyers up front, and please sign up if you're interested. Um, last but not least, we have Magda Arroyo, the Business Development Director at Brown & Brown Insurance. <laughs> Magda has over 20 years of experience in the financial services industry and a deep knowledge of the cannabis and insurance industries. Magda is one of Brown & Brown's teammates, building a presence in the growing cannabis industry. At Brown & Brown, she cultivates and manages corporate relationships. She's also the founder of Cannabis Connections and Cannabis Santa, a networking platform for the cannabis industry. She's also, as we all know, a passionate advocate for the industry, especially social equity, networking, job promotion, community activism, and outreach within the Santa Barbara County area. And um, I was very excited because at the NCIA um, conference in San, <laughs> San Jose a few weeks ago, I was rocking out to Jim Belushi and I look up and Magda is on stage with Jim. It was, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Anna. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, as Amy mentioned, my name is Autumn Shelton. I'm CFO and co-owner. Co Hold the mic closer. Sorry. Uh, CFO and co-owner of Autumn Brands. We are located in coastal Santa Barbara County over in Carpinteria Valley. We are a licensed cultivator, 50% women owned and united by the vision of two families. We are dedicated to the synergy of health and wellness and committed to cultivating highest quality, pesticide free, sun grown, indoor cannabis flower possible. Our family farm started in Holland more than a century ago, applying the same expertise gardened and garnered in growing the world's finest cut flowers to producing pure and potent strains of cannabis. 
We are dedicated to sustainable practices. We utilize a closed loop watering system, so all water is reused and recycled. All organic waste is either repurposed into packaging products or turned into compost. Current products that we have, we have a premium one eighth glass jar, a seven pack half gram uh, pre-roll pack, a one gram pre-roll pack, and a 80% premium THC vape cartridge. Autumn Brands was one of the founding members of CARP Growers, which is the Cannabis Association for Responsible Producers. The main goal is to build positive relationships by setting best practices and community outreach. The membership includes over 20 entities, over 14 properties with over 150 cultivation licenses. We have strict requirements to be a member which allows us to continue to set those best practices. Some of these requirements, current licensing, compliance with state and local regulations, a vapor phase control, a vapor phase odor control, water conservation practices, fair labor practices, blackout screens, biological pest control, and local ownership or management. Other requirements for odor control, which is very important, are processing rooms must be enclosed, have negative pressure and include carbon filtration. We must operate our odor control systems at full power 24 seven and provide any type of reporting necessary to prove that we are staying up to standards. Now the true impact in Carpinteria is odor. And since the bioscientific system went into place there, there's been a huge reduction in odor. But unfortunately for all, for as many, for as many farms that have implemented it, there's that many that haven't. And so the impacts remain and the complaints remain. Now I'm asking the Concerned Carpinteria group, which is the anti-group there, and anyone else that has concerns to work with us, work with carp growers, so that we can go after the groups or after the farms that don't have odor control. It's still so not working very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right right close. Your mouth. Okay. loud. You gotta be yeah, that's really cool. loud. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, so if we work together, then we can combat those that aren't actually being good neighbors and aren't actually the ones that are implementing this odor control system. And once that happens, carpinteria and the impacts and the complaints will go away. Carp Growers has been around for a year. It utilizes its resources and membership dues to support the community in volunteering and donating to numerous charities. Some of the most recent were Girls Softball League and Junior Warriors Football. They're about to be title sponsor for Girls Inc. and Evening in Bloom in September, and numerous members are doubling down and individually donating as well. Now it's important to understand that in any normal business, charitable donations are deductible, but in the cannabis industry under 280E, it is not. So everything that we do is for the community because we are members of the community and it is all truly from our heart. This process with the county permitting has been long and onerous already. We thought it would be four, three to six months and we're eight months in and still have no end in sight. We'll be lucky if we get through this by December of 2020. But we will continue to persevere and do what we need to do to get through this and be successful. Community interest is growing. Currently 50 to 75 people tour Carpinteria Cultivation Greenhouses every month through CARP Growers. CARP Cop Sun continues their monthly leaf learning and constant community members returning each month for more education and questions. People are interested. They're interested in understanding the truth about cannabis and how important this plant is and how good cannabis farmers truly are. Let's continue to educate and outreach to as many people as we can and fight the lies and the propaganda that continue <clears throat> to infiltrate our community. Growing agriculture for human consumption has many challenges, whether it's fruits or vegetables. The first priority should be providing a product that is as healthy as can be for the consumer. Profitability, second. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah Rotman. Thank you. <laughs> Hey everybody, um, thanks Autumn. That was super awesome. Okay, uh, thank you Susan. Um, this is gonna make it look like, excuse me with my glasses and trying to organize all this stuff. Um, 
<laughs> but I have a big, vet, loud voice, so I'm going to go ahead and make myself heard. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Thank you guys for supporting just the legal cannabis growers and operators in this county. It has not been an um, easy or smooth ride, as Autumn says, but I honestly believe this is actually sort of the stuff that entrepreneurial dreams are made of, and I'm a super big Pollyanna about it, and I'm going to wax poetic about it right now because I'm really excited. So my name is Sarah Rotman, and um, together with my husband, Nate, I own Busy Bees Organics, which is our license holding farm up in Buellton. We have 34 provisional licenses right now in cultivation, and uh, we have been, as many of the people in this room know, working our way through the, the Byzantine and challenging circumstances uh, surrounding legal compliance in the county and in the state. Um, and as challenging as it's been, I'd like to take a moment to sort of reflect on the two things that I think are sort of key words that have brought us here. And I don't think I'm gonna have much negative to say, even though I know that we're all facing a lot of challenges. But for me, reflecting on tonight's talk and what I wanted to share, I was struck by a through line in my story into cannabis, the experience of working my way through Santa Barbara's legal process, and the experience of being an entrepreneur, a pioneer in this emerging, misunderstood, and sometimes vilified industry, and doing it all as a woman, which add its own level of complexity. For me, two words came to mind, serendipitous and surprising. My journey into cannabis was via grave illness, as Amy said, which was clearly not on any of my plans. But as they say, if you want to make God laugh, make plans. I had no dream to be a cannabis farmer and an even less interest in learning about the healing or recreational possibilities of this wonder plant. But after a years long battle with debilitating illness, which robbed me of my health, my career, my passions, my sense of humor, and after exhausting all other avenues uh, traditional medicine had for me, I finally turned to cannabis in desperation. And surprise, surprise, uh, it cured what ailed me, or at least made my symptoms bearable, that al and allowed me a different version of my life, and that is what has emerged today and what you see before you. Lucky for me, this happened in a place, thank you, um, a place and a time where cannabis was just becoming legal and in a county that was forward thinking in its approach to legalization. And for me, I believe that to be quite serendipitous. And again, surprising. These two words seem to carry equal weight in considering tonight's speakers. This evening was not conceived of as a women in cannabis event. Rather, it is a gathering of some of the top local professionals operating here in Santa Barbara County. It just so happens that we are all women. To some, this in itself is surprising. But as I have done my whole career, I choose to ignore the fact that this is a surprise. Um, as often is the case when we see groups of successful female leaders, we are either surprised to see them in leadership roles or we self-segregate them into our own gender groups, which I think diminishes the import of our achievements. For example, on our farm, each and every member of our team, including our ownership, are either female, Latino, or both. And each is there because they are the very best at their job, agnostic of gender or cultural background. And to me, that is no surprise. What is more triumphantly surprising about this evening and our emerging local industry, and what I would like to focus on today and in the future, is the fact that in Santa Barbara, we have a once in a generation opportunity to become the world leaders in a globally relevant and powerful industry that changes lives for the better. And can we all just soak that up a little bit? <laughs> we are actually doing this in a way that also provides the most environmentally sound and controlled crop in the United States and the world. So we're actually doing a lot of good and we are at the forefront of something that is as big as the dot-com generation. We can be the Silicon Valley of cannabis and we have this unique opportunity. And better yet, uh, we, can do, we can become this world leader with a sustainable crop that not only provides healing medicine to our local population, uh, we can bring economic boon to our local economy and provide a path to financial independence for our local workforce who have till now suffered the third highest rate of poverty in the state, in Santa Barbara. Okay, like we gotta fix that people and we're doing it. So cannabis farmers are fixing this. And we're doing this all right now, but just as being a leader and as, as a woman or a person of color is more difficult than it is for others, so is being at the pointy end of the spear in a new and misunderstood industry. Yes, serendipity and staggeringly good luck has provided us with this completely unique set of circumstances that can allow Santa Barbara to become the world leaders in what is arguably the most important industry the world has seen since the emergence of the digital age. Here in Santa Barbara, we are unique in the state and the world for our perfect climate, soil, agricultural history, knowledge, legislative will, and workforce to grow the world's best cannabis. 
and we must cherish and nurture this opportunity or we will lose it. And to do so, we must create a network of community leaders and organizations who will work together to ensure our newly defined industry is protected and allowed to thrive, like the car growers and the North County Farmers Guild that I will share with you shortly about. But we must also work to educate the uninformed, which will help prevent them from being swayed by misinformation. As with anything new, unfamiliar and frightening, we will have our detractors, and they will fight to prevent us from being successful. And as you all know, here in Santa Barbara, some of them are doing exactly that. But as every successful entrepreneur has learned, the only way to get to the other side of this fire is to go through it, and through it we must go. As my fellow sisters all know, we have to be emphatically better, stronger, more resilient and dignified in order to be perceived as equal, relevant or worthy. And to some of our detractors, they may never get there or believe us to be these things, but they will be small in number and eventually, and this one's for Jay, they will dissipate like a fart in the wind. <laughs> and the good news is we've been doing our own organizing and we have formed several grassroots organizations that serve as a community of support and a nexus of information and provide tools designed to ensure our rights are protected, our legislative agenda is sound, and our practices are ethical. Groups like the Carp Growers and the North County Farmers Guild who do exist exclusively to try to protect and ensure our rights and the operation of ethical legal farming in this county is safe and allowable and that we're allowed to thrive. Um, you know, these guys have been doing an amazing job in South County and in North County we have a slightly different set of circumstances, both relevant, much overlap, but sometimes sort of unique. Uh, and to address our concerns and needs, we have established our organization, the North County Farmers Guild, which is an advocacy group for outdoor, local, sun grown farming. Our members consist of cannabis and row crop farmers, vendors, planners, attorneys, and affiliated businesses who interface and benefit from our industry. We have already launched a consumer-facing campaign, which I'm hoping that many of you have seen, called Good Farmers, Great Neighbors, to try to promote awareness and participation in everything that everyone here is doing and can hopefully benefit from. And we are continuing this work uh, across the board, so not only in consumer-facing education, but also in support at a grassroots level, behind the scenes level, you know, local level, and even just getting people out to make sure that every one of these appeals has a really loud, vocal, informed, and um, articulate voice in supporting what we understand to be legal and benefit uh, to this community. So we are educating and activating the public on the issues and realities of farming here, uh, cannabis farming here in our community, and providing support and information for our locally legal compliant farmers who are going through this appeal process. But we need all to stand together and we are gonna begin to do so. These meetings have gotten bigger and stronger and more amazing. Uh, our detractors are small in number, but they are noisy, but I don't think that they're the point. I think the point is these kind of conversations that we're having today. I'd like to invite everyone to visit you know, www.goodfarmersgreatneighbors.com. We have a really great system there for finding out how you can support us, whether you're a cannabis farmer or you simply benefit from having local, legally compliant and clean cannabis in your community, or if you are just working with other cannabis farmers or you have ancillary businesses, uh, thanks, Susan. I never told him too quiet, <laughs> but um, but I do invite you all to you know to visit our website, to come to all of the meetings, to participate. It is so important right now. The most important thing that we can do is to normalize this process. We're being vilified through lack of information. We have to come out into the light. We have to be the shiny, pointy end of the spear. It is scary. It makes us a target. It makes us unpopular with a couple of people. But mostly, you're going to find that people say thank you. Thank you for doing this hard work. Thank you for providing us with this medicine. Thank you for giving us jobs. Thank you for paying into the tax base. Thank you for doing something difficult that others haven't been willing to do. And to me, that's the absolute synthesis of any good entrepreneur. We had this extraordinary, exquisite opportunity. Let's not squander it. And thank you guys all so much for being here and for supporting us. Um, so we have these booklets that talk a little bit about our organization. And again, you don't have to be a cannabis outdoor grower to participate. This is really a piece of information and an opportunity for all of us to sort of garner support and make sure that your access is protected. So please, you know, have a look, see what we're doing. Please sign up. You know, again, you don't have to be a grower to be a member. And um, it's a great place for information and to see how you can help make sure that your rights are protected. Okay, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Hi everybody, so um, I thought we were on a panel, so I was expecting to answer questions, but <laughs> so that's not happening, so here we go, I improvise pretty quickly, but uh, I'm always so shy, so I never have anything to talk about. So, anyways, needless to say, cannabis 
was never what I wanted to do. I demonized it. People, people knew me as somebody who just wasn't having it. I sent my kids to juvenile hall. I sent my kids to CADA. I sent a lot of kids to CADA. <laughs> but I wouldn't change any of that. I worked for the Boys and Girls Club at that time. I wouldn't change any of what I did. I just learned that I needed to become educated on what we needed to do for these youth. And, you know, I fault myself a lot. I was on a panel recently with a Dr. Behrman and Zayin was our moderator there. And so it was so perfect. It was great. I was so humbled because if you don't know him, oh my gosh. So I'm sitting there listening and I didn't know what to add as far as value. And I realized that I became educated and I'm not that person who doesn't you know, listen anymore and who just says one size fits all on your meds. I became sick and who treated me? It wasn't my doctor, it was my son. The one that I sent to juvenile hall and broke his bone and threw away so many eights, so many, oh my gosh. So I'm the reason he got beat up at school because it was probably somebody else's it. So needless to say, I, I learned. He taught me now that that was the medicine I needed. And if some, a few of you, I've lived here all my life. I was three years old when I came here. And I, became, I was 168 pounds. They had me on every thyroid medicine. First I had Hashimoto's and I had Graves and they didn't know what I had. So he said, stop. I started, you know, with cannabis. I worked at a bank. I felt guilty. My clients were flower growers, all of a sudden they're depositing so much cash and I'm like, shit, I'm gonna go to jail. <laughs> so you either beat them or join them. And that's why I'm at, I joined them. And I was able to be outspoken now about the benefits of cannabis and I didn't have to be a cannabis closet smoker. I could help my children more get a career where before I would say, you can't do that, I'm a banker. You can't be working in cannabis. You're clients are going to want to do business with me. And so I stopped progress right there. And once again, when I came into this, I was able to push him forward with everything that he's, he's the one I've learned everything from. He should be up here, not me. I mean, he's taught me everything from dabs and I should have started first with, um, with cannabis. I started with dabs. I thought that's the way you were supposed to smoke it. Anyways, needless to say, it helped. I have Crohn's. I'm sorry. I needed it. <laughs> so, so I went backwards and anyways, but he did teach me everything about good stuff, bad stuff. And the reason I'm saying this is because now he feels really good about himself. And there was a point where he felt like he didn't have a purpose in life. And he went through his his problems where he didn't know what to do, you know, his reading and writing. He didn't want to be a mechanic, but he didn't want to be an executive. He loved his cannabis and, you know, he would scroll down Instagram and learn. I mean, he knows every grower. He knows everything good. And so for me, seeing him now grow and be proud and show up and have a purpose is what's motivated me to give other kids, the same kids at the Boys and Girls Club that didn't have a purpose, to encourage their parents, not them, so their parents to acknowledge that it's a career. It's a career, it's not a job, it's a career. I mean, they're learning science, they're learning everything. I went on a tour to Bloom Farms just recently because they're doing that, you know, they're letting the community come in and do tours. I mean, how amazing is that? We get to see everything. There's no pesticides. There's no none of what they're talking about. I didn't smell what people are saying you're supposed to be smelling. So I see these people walk around with so much pride. And some of these kids were the ones that I demonized. And I said, you know, you need to go and get a real job. Well, they have real jobs. And I educated myself. And I thank all of these ladies who are really the people we should thank because they have sacrificed their lives, their money, their everything. I mean, I went from a job that was a salary to another job with a salary. So I didn't, I not have that loss when things don't go right or when they have to spend more money because the regulations change midstream. And they need you, they need us. I mean, we're, I'm just a voice. I'm, I'm here because 
I have a really loud voice and you know if I could get an email list I would stalk you guys and make sure you guys showed up to the meetings because we all need you I mean we need it for ourselves for for all of the people who are, these people are making money and they're shopping at your stores for the people who are gonna buy a new car and you're the salesperson there's so much that to be gained from just getting involved if you believe them, believe the right way and get involved. Don't just say, oh yeah, I'm going to show up at this thing. And no, they need you all the time. And if you can't show up, write letters. There's something that maybe they haven't heard. Write a letter. Answer some of those, those newspaper you know, comments. Be that person that comments. It can't just be the same few people because it's no longer relevant. You all feel the same way as I do. So just step it up and and you know let's give these ladies some credit because they're freaking amazing yeah. and you know well, anyway thank you guys for every oh wait i do need to say something i work with brown and brown insurance <laughs> <laughs> and i always say i'm giving you my card and i want to explore synergies so we're going to talk about all the fun stuff you do and we will refer business to each other but don't expect me not to ask you for your business because <laughs> That's not who I am. I give, I get, we work together, but I wouldn't work with anybody who wasn't the best. So it does, I mean, that's a, that's a given. I've worked with Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies. This is the best, and I know I've got the best people. I fish, they cook the fish the best I've ever eaten, and the best you could too. So thank you so much, and that's my team, Matt and Gavin, and, um, God, and then who else was here? So, anyways, that's my team. They're amazing. We're amazing. Everybody's amazing, and I love you guys. And and then Zain with Canna Club. It's his birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Canna Club UCSB, and they're gonna help the movement so much. So we've gotta butter him up. Anyway, thank you so much. Well, somebody you. buy him a free drink. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jimbaga. <laughs> Um, we just want to close by saying um, thank you for coming. We know there's been a lot of confusion over the different regulations in this county, the cities. There's a patchwork quilt that's extremely confusing. So Jack and I put together a little guidebook to what you can and cannot do in every city in this county. So Jack's going to be um, passing these out. The regulations are changing constantly. Please show up on August 20th at the County Board of Supervisors. We'll be sending out emails about that. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Felipe to thank our wonderful sponsors. Hello, everyone. My name is Felipe. I'm with 805 Cannabis Society and Delta Leaf Labs. We started throwing these events back in November. I'm glad that you're coming. Um, people are coming after our industry. And we got to act like a family and, and come out and support them and show up when it counts. Because without our cultivators, we won't exist. So we got to rally. We got to bring more people to the next event and get informed. Oh. Sorry about that. Like right, up to your lips. right up to my lips. But yeah, um, I wanted to say happy birthday to Zane. Uh, Bob just stole my speech, but yeah, you've been you've, you've helped these events since day one, and you're an awesome intern. And it, you started the UCSB Cannabis Club. You're an amazing person. He's leaving us, and he's going to Berlin for uh, an entire semester. So happy birthday, Zane! Um, and I want to thank our sponsors. We've got Coastal 101 CBD. <laughs> Yeah, 101 CBD, shout out to them. They were a last minute sponsor. If you're interested in sponsoring, come talk to us. I'm Kristen from SP Verde and 805 Cannabis Society. And I also want to comment on what Sarah said, because I loved it. This wasn't a women's night. This was a badass professionals night. Like, these women are awesome. And most importantly, they're just amazing local cannabis farmers and Magda and activists and advocate. Um, I love what you said about that. That was awesome. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, and I just want to close with saying something. Um, this is the kind of mentality that's out there and I'm just throwing it out there um, so that you know. Um, we invited some people through Instagram and we got this message. I'm probably the opposite of a feminist. I can care less if women are in the industry and I doubt I'll ever pay to listen to them. Wow. So this is what our women in cannabis are getting. 
Um, this is what gay people, this is what people of color are getting. And so it's not about highlighting anyone in particular, but it's about showing up as a family because it takes someone in every note to make that choir, that chorus sound beautiful. So with that said, thank you for coming. If, and if you're interested in, in uh, sponsoring next events or, or speaking, by all means, like let us know because we're always down to, to listen and to collaborate wherever we can. Love you guys and we'll see you at the next one in San Luis Obispo. Um, to be announced, was sponsored by 805 Cannabis Society. Have a great night. Let's drink up. Happy birthday, Zay.